So, um, all right. So I want you to tell me, take me a bit back. I think you, you started this idea in 2019, right? No. Okay. Um, this idea started in 2010. In 2010? Wow. Yes. Okay, so what's the story behind it? How, how did you go about it? Okay, so what happened was um, in 2010, I got a scholarship for PhD under an organization called SASIT that was funded by the Wellcome Trust. And um, in that, um, uh, under the, there were several um, themes under that uh, program. And then I chose the theme of uh, development of tests for filoviruses. So then with, um, I had a mentor who is uh, Prof Professor Justin Masumo from UPN University in, Kinsh in Kinshasa, DRC. And he suggested that um, we make a rapid test for filovirus um, diagnosis. So uh, when I say filovirus, um, that's the, the family that the Ebola virus belongs to, Mabic virus belongs to. So that was basically where the idea started. But then how to go about it, that was where the problem was because um, we didn't have the facilities, the technology, the know-how about how to go about it. But we did realize that it was important to have a rapid test. So that is how um, my supervisor at that time, who was also the dean of the School of Veterinary Medicine, Professor Moene, reached out to Professor Takada from um, the International Institute for Zoonosis Control in Hokkaido University, Japan. And uh, that's where the collaboration okay. began. Yes. All right. So um, I learned that you you were involved in the production of the antibodies for this yeah. uh, kit. All right. So yeah. can you explain the process involved in creating this um, antibody, the antibodies required for this kit? Okay. So um, basically, um, I, I, I'm sure we all know what antibodies are. When the body gets infected by any foreign um, organism, then the body is going to um, produce a response to that foreign organism. And what you normally get as a response to that organism is what we call polyclonal antibodies. So the antibodies are effective against a lot of different parts or segments of that virus or bacteria or something. But to make a test like this, we need to be very sure of the type of antibodies that they had to be very specific. So these are what are called mon monoclonal antibodies that are only specific for a specific area of the virus. So that um, when you want to produce a test, you know that it is always going to pick up the virus because of that specific part of the virus that it is identifying. So what we what the process was to make monoclonal antibodies, and how is that done? Uh, the first thing that we had to do was actually make a, a virus that simulates make a virus particle that simulates the Ebola virus, but is not infectious. So basically, maybe I could say like an outer casing or outer shell of the virus that that is actually or looks like authentic virus, but cannot produce itself, so cannot infect. So that when you then then you uh we what we made what are called virus like particles that is involving three of the seven genes of the Ebola virus and that basically created a shell of the virus that made it look like it was an authentic virus injected that into mouse mice and then the the mice responded because so the mice responded by making many different antibodies so the polyclonal antibodies so there was many different parts of that virus like particle and then what we had to do then now was to actually get the the antibodies from the mice and antibodies we use the skin of the mice because you have a lot of um the the b cells in the spleen those are the ones that produce the antibodies and we basically cultured those cells and extracted like one how, how can I put it, like one cell in one well. So like we try to get an individual cell 
Sometimes we couldn't, sometimes we could, but you dilute it in such a way that you're only getting one cell so that that one cell is only producing one type of antibody. Because what we, we didn't want was the polyclonal, we wanted the monoclonal specific one. So we got, uh, I think in that we had 127 different cells producing different antibodies. And then from those um, 127 cells, we then had to see which antibody would pick up the virus infection better. So we then had to do several tests to see which antibody has a stronger response to the virus, like particle, the, 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 the one that we created. And so from that 127, we narrowed it down to 10 different antibodies that were picking up uh, strongly the Ebola virus, as well as other filoviruses that also, uh, other Ebola viruses that have caused uh, disease in, in humans. Because we don't only have one specific type of Ebola virus that causes disease in humans, we have several. So what we wanted was to have something that was cross-reactive so that as long as it's an Ebola virus, it should pick. So from those seven, I mean, from those 10 um, that we had narrowed it down to, um, with the help of the the company that produced the test, that is the commercial, uh, the company is called Denka. Um, then we were able to then narrow down to two that were very very strong, and then those two are the ones that were used in the test. So to actually pick up the 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 virus like particle, and then following that. We then, because remember, we were not using actual real virus, we were using um, uh, a pseudovirus or, uh, or a shell, let me say like a shell of the virus. So obviously we had to then see if it worked with the actual virus. And that is how we were able to collaborate with our colleagues in the Democratic Republic of Congo who have had several Ebola virus outbreaks and they have Ebola virus um, positive samples and we were able to then go and test um, in the DRC, as well as doing some other la laboratory tests in some um, in the lab that also um, uh, cultivates the live virus. So basically, that was the process. Okay, so uh, in narrating the first this um, process, it sounds as though everything went really smooth. But I, I want to <laughs> indicate. So, what what were the challenges you you experienced while you know creating the antibodies? Well, uh, um, uh, I would say it's not like it's a smooth process. They have, I've summarized maybe in two minutes. Yeah, so um, of course, um, even just the process of making the monoclonal antibodies takes a long time. It took us about five months wow. to actually produce the monoclonal antibodies before we could even start um, thinking of sending them to 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 Denka company for the actual production of the physical test. So and after that, of course, we had multi, we had to do multiple tests. At some point, when we made the first prototype was made, it didn't work very efficiently. Um, it was able to detect, but it was not detecting so well. And the, the biggest challenge really was that at that time, because I remember I started this process in twenty ten. And um, at that time, people knew, not many people knew about Ebola. It was not a disease that people would then say that uh, we really need a test for Ebola because it, it was a disease of poor nations in remote regions, nobody really cared. Mm -hmm. But then what happened to actually accelerate the test was that there was the outbreak of Ebola in, in West Africa in 2014. I'm sure you are aware of that. Yes, I think yes. that, that is when the majority of the world got to know about Ebola. Yeah. Because at that time, the device had even been put on the shelf because it was not working efficiently. Um, the company that was um, was producing it really was concentrating on other com things that were commercially viable. Mm -hmm. So when the outbreak um, occurred, they basically remembered that we have this product and <laughs> went back to it and were able to refine it in such a way that it was then um, um, 
working better than it had been before. And that is why then in, 20, um, I think I was 2015, okay. um, that's when we went to DRC to test the, with the actual um, samples that have been in, that the DRC had from previous outbreaks. So it's not been um, a smooth uh, process really. It's been a process of a long work that it takes long to do and then you, it got interrupted and then it was resumed. And uh, finally we have a product that is in use, that is available for use. All right, so before we go into um, the introduction of these kits to DRC, um, let's talk about um, how these um, antibodies contribute to the um, efficiency and accuracy of this um, kit. So I, I want to know how long does it take, or what's the process like in using this kit, and how long does it take for, for one to detect the virus upon use of the kit? Actually, um, the kit is very easy to use. And the reason why we we had to do it like that, uh, maybe I should just backtrack a bit, is that I mentioned already yeah. that Ebola was a disease of of um, third world nations. And even in those third world nations, well, it was not a disease of the city. It was a disease of, of um, the remote areas in the forest. So really nobody paid much attention to, to making a test like, um, like the one that we made. And one of the, the effects of, of there being a lack of, of uh, field adapted tests was that because the outbreaks were starting in remote areas that were very, very far away from any um, lab with sophisticated equipment, because previously you had to have sophisticated equipment to do the diagnosis of Ebola. And so because of that, the outbreak would start and a lot of people would die because people would be getting infected. And it is only when you started getting healthcare workers getting sick that people would then have think about and say, what are we looking at? Is Could it be Ebola? Because then you have healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, people in the clinic, getting sick and dying. And then that is when attention would be paid to the disease. And it would take even up to three to four months from the initial outbreak to the point where the disease is then finally diagnosed as Ebola. That is how long it would take. Even the West African outbreak took several months before it was actually diagnosed as Ebola because it started in the remote regions, but it kept on amplifying until it went into the cities. So the reason why we made the test was we wanted to make sure that even in the remote areas where there is no electricity, there is no um, it's sophisticated laboratory equipment, even sophisticated know-how on how to run the equipment, you can have a simple test that any simple clinician can use and be able to detect the disease and to stop transmission at that point to reduce further transmission and to limit the outbreak, just the first few cases. Basically, that was the aim of the, the test. Okay, so so how long, like how many minutes does it take? Is it a Oh, yes, so the, it takes about, um. so from the time when you draw the, so you get a blood sample um, and place it on the test, it is 10 minutes for you okay. to read the result. So In it's 10 a, minutes. Okay. Okay, so is it self? Is it is something that anyone can do by themselves? No, the reason why it's not it's not something that anyone can do by themselves is that Ebola is a very highly infectious disease. It's a it is what we call a level four pathogen. So even to handle it, you have to have um the safety level four experience. So it's not something you can go and buy over the counter and test yourself for Ebola. No, but that's what I'm saying that it's something that a clinician, somebody who is um working in the medical setting, healthcare setting, can use to 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 diagnose Ebola. All right. So now let's go to the introduction. You mentioned that in 2015, that was when you you took this um innovation or this product to DRC Congo. So what were the uh, I'm sure at the time it was the in the heat of the um, outbreak. So what were the initial reaction or responses from the um, the health professionals at the authorities in the country when when you told them about your kit? 
Okay, so the reason really that um one of the main reasons that we were able to go to DRC to test the kit was if you if you recall initially when I at the beginning when I was talking about how this thing was conceptualized and developed, I mentioned that there was um um under the 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 project that I was um that was sponsoring my PhD, I had a mentor. And that mentor was uh, Professor, Professor uh, Masumo from DRC. And we started the journey together. And because of that connection, we were able to reach out to Professor Masumo and ask him to say, we, we, we now have the product, but the product is only lab validated. It is not validated with actual human samples. So can you help us to connect us to Inebe to, um, to actually do the testing? And that is how we're able then, because of that, to then get into DRC. And initially the first visit was to then test with the authentic samples or samples that were from um, um, positive cases and see how well the tests worked on those samples. All right. So, so the response was very positive because of that connection. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. So. Now that um, they, 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 they embrace the kit, how has it um, impacted the um, detection and contamination of Ebola virus in DRC? So basically, um, I think from around 2018, the kit has been available in DRC. And um, I remember that in 2018, DRC had two outbreaks of Ebola virus disease and in at least one of those outbreaks the test was was the one that was was first used to detect the, the outbreak in the remote areas so in terms of um impact drc it has had an impact because they have been able to to um, distribute the tests into these remote areas in these regions that are prone to these outbreaks and then they have been able to then use them in the field um, to make the initial diagnosis before they do the validation with the sophisticated lab, lab uh, equipment from um, the capital city. All right, so let's talk numbers. So how many kits have you been able to send across since um, you sent to DRC? Okay, so for the numbers, I will I I do not have specific numbers in detail, but I know it's it's over two thousand kits. It's it's a large number, yeah. Uh, of course, the kit is not um commercially available, but the company Denka uh, is gracious enough to produce the kits um a certain number of kits that were able to supply um for no cost to DRC. All right. So were there any um cultural or logistical challenge in taking down this kit from, from Zambia to DRC? No, because one of the things is that because DRC has had um such a number of outbreaks, DRC has had uh, um experience with Ebola for such a long time that um they have been able to come up with mechanisms of how to respond and anything that can help their response or improve their response is welcome so for us we know that the test is just something that was aiding drc to improve their response to um ebola virus outbreak all right so let's move down to the health workers who are testing this um using these kits to test where, where did you provide any sort of special education or training before they could make use of the kit? Yes, so basically the kit comes with a self-explanatory um, labeling and packaging on how to use the kit. But of course, even the initial time when we went to DRC and we worked with the individuals who are involved in testing for um, Ebola virus, we're able to then show them how the, the, the kit is used. But it's it's so, um the, the, the biggest thing about this Ebola testing kit is not about the use of the kit, but it is about how the people using the kit can protect themselves from infection. So it's basically because, um as I said, it's, it's a level four pathogen. So you have to handle it with care. That is why we the, the healthcare workers that use the kit already know 
the how to um protect their, themselves um how to use the basic ppe and the ppe measures so the use of the kit itself is not complicated All so right. um as the the anybody who is who has worked in the lab and reads the packaging is able to to do the test okay so let's look at long term how do you think this kids can contribute to future um, outbreak responses or um, public health emergencies? Um, as I mentioned earlier, that um, one of the things that had been happening in a lot of, in the majority of Ebola virus outbreaks is that months would go by before it is actually diagnosed as Ebola. Because one thing that you need to know is that Ebola comes with symptoms of normal tropical diseases like malaria-like symptoms, um, yellow fever-like symptoms. So these are diseases that are found in our in, in 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 within Africa. So people would be treated for these other diseases without them knowing that it's actually Ebola. So what what this kit does is is it it helps to reduce the time between the initial uh, outbreak or the first person and the confirmation to say this is actually Ebola. And because of that, it actually reduces the number of people who get into touch with that person and then the number of people who then subsequently get infected. So basically, it limits the outbreak. And that is the biggest um, uh, thing that we want to take away from with this test is that we need to limit the outbreaks. And limiting outbreaks means early detection. Early detection means that simple test that is rapid and easily deployable in the field, easily used in the field. And that is what this test is. Okay, so on a final note, um, how scalable um, do you see this kit, um, at least for other countries? I know that you, you produce in Zambia and then sent to Congo. No, sorry, no, the kit is not produced in Zambia. The kit is produced in Japan. Japan. Okay, thank you for the correction. The company Denka, yes, the company Denka is based in Japan. All right, all right. So how, how scalable is the production in the case of like health emergencies and they need to, you know, maybe send it down or really send it down to say an African country? How, how scalable basically is the production of these kits? The, well, it, it, it is scalable in that the company that is producing this kit does not only produce a uh, kit for Ebola, they mainly produce kits for influenza. And um, so they have a production system that can easily and very quickly be adapted to in, to produce large numbers of the, the test kit when needed. One of the things that we are trying to do also with the test kit is to get to what is called um, WHO pre-qualification, where if it is um, accepted by WHO, then it is easier for it to then be used in uh, multiple different countries um, when there is an outbreak. Okay, so for now, the, the, the WHO has not um, um, recognized it yet, officially? Not yet, not yet, but, um, but the application has been made. Oh, great. When was that done? Um, I, will not I do not recall. I think the application was made initially uh -huh. around the time when we had the, East, the West African outbreak, but then um, uh, a resubmission was then done after that as well. All right. Okay. So um, that that's all. That's all. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking our time, Dr. Katendi, for um um speaking and elaborating and spotlighting. It's very important. I I sincerely I didn't know that there, there, there's a kit like this, and like you rightly mentioned, um, it'll be very very useful for uh, prevention of um the Ebola outbreak. Like we're just praying. We don't know how it's the, the next year or future years will be, but we're grateful that you were able to think about this and we're able to work on it. Thank you very much. Um, so apart from this Ebola kit, um, there's a one which was recently um, made, and this is for Marburg virus. So Marburg virus and Ebola virus are from the same family of filoviruses, and they cause the same disease. Okay. And we actually, uh, like in uh, last year, 2023, the, there was actually, I think, two outbreaks of uh, Mabek virus, one of them in Tanzania. Okay. So there's a kit 
which works the same as Ebola, which has just been produced. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping also that we are able to um, use it just as the Ebola one has been used. So the difference between the Ebola virus kit and the Mabeg virus kit is that the Ebola virus kit, the monoclonal antibodies were developed in Japan. So I had to go to Japan to make them. But for the Mabeg virus kit, um, we were able to to have the technology transfer to Zambia, and I was able to produce the monoclonal antibodies right here in Zambia. Although, of course, we don't have, we still don't have the mechanisms of making the test, so the monoclonal antibodies still had to go back to Japan, to the to Denka to have the kit made. Okay, so you were able to deploy it to Tanzania for the... No, we unfortunately, we were not because we tried to get in touch with some people from Tanzania and told them that we have this kit and um, it can um, you can use it in the field. But um, I think also because of um, maybe the time period, everybody was concentrating really on maybe trying to, to respond to the outbreak. So um, we were not able to get the kit into Tanzania at that time. But we are hoping that if there's another outbreak, then we can get the kit deployed to whichever country it is that All right. has an outbreak. All right. All right. Thank you so much for that piece of information. Thank you for the interview. And uh, we we're expecting the audio from, from you. I'm hoping you can send it via via Zoom. I'm sorry, I said Zoom. I via can, email, I mean. Via sorry. WhatsApp? A, or WhatsApp. I'll send my WhatsApp number to you via email. So you can send it. You can also send it via WhatsApp. And I, I would please appreciate if you can pronounce your name so that um the, uh, uh, the voice of a person can get it correctly. Okay, so my full name is Kadendi Changula. Katendi Changula. Okay, and what's your full designation at the university? So currently, I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Zambia School of Veterinary Medicine. All right, thank you very much. I'll I'll share. I'll send a mail with um to you right now. I'll send my WhatsApp number. All right. So um, this is going to be part of a podcast. Is this going to involve the interviews with the other people, with the other members of the team, and yes. then it will be put together as one? Yes, it will be put together as one. So it's more like okay. a science explained podcast. Where okay. we, yes. So we we it's 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 all joined together. So it makes sense that everyone's voices come together yes. to talk about yeah. it. Okay.